Well, it's election eve. And I got a feeling that 24, 36 hours from now, things are going to be... I'm not even sure what the term I'm looking for is. This has been a, a stressful and trying time. I mean, it really has been. I do a lot of reading, as you know. I do a lot of history, as you know. And I know that there are political presidential races in our past that were every bit as foobard as this one was between people who hated each other. Reading early yesterday about the 1848 election and how the Whigs and the Democrat Republicans and 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 so forth and so on. And remember, we were coming out of the Mexican-American War and the way candidates were, were chosen, particularly by the Whigs, the, and the slavery issue was so divisive. I mean, we just don't even have a clue today how divisive that was. It's remarkable to think that the president who was elected by the people of the United States, via their representatives in the Electoral College, did not want the Compromise of 1850. He vehemently opposed it. He wouldn't put anybody in his cabinet. He wouldn't support it, wouldn't do anything for it. And then he died. And his vice president, who by all accounts he hated and didn't want any part of, um, pushed through the Compromise of 1850 by most historian standards that at least delayed the start of the American Civil War. But you were dealing with uh, candidates who were literally judged on the basis of the single issue of slavery and whether they favored it or opposed it or didn't oppose it enough or didn't favor it enough. You know, they just weren't, they weren't, uh, <laughs> it wasn't that they weren't for it. It's that they, they weren't for it enough or they weren't again it enough. It was crazy. And I look at these two today and I think as crazy as this is, it's not the end of the world. It's it's not going to be the everything. But there is a fear that the worst is yet to come. There is a fear out there that nothing's going to end with the election. That no matter what happens tomorrow or for the next 100 days or however long it takes, it's not going to end there. And that's, I think... I think that's what, what, what people are really most afraid of. I think, I think if there was a definitive feeling that if we elect one candidate or the other, this whole thing just goes back to normal, I, I, I think there'd be a lot more confidence. I, I think the fear is the unknown. It's the undiscovered country. It's the future. It's people not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring, even after the election of 2020. The weird part to me is all the, uh, the mentality that says, if we don't elect, fill in the blank, it's the end of the country, the nation will end. You know, for most of human history, people have been predicting the end of whatever, the end of society, the end of humanity, the end of the world, and oddly enough, we're still here. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I have my own thoughts, I have my own ideas, I have my own concerns. I spent a lot of time uh, last Friday, talking with my friend Bill Mick about this, because there's something in this election that concerns me in the sense of how people are reacting to it. And my primary concern is that both sides are absolutely, 100%, completely convinced that they know, without a doubt, what's going to happen. There's no... There's no room for anything in their minds of saying, there's a chance, you know, the, the, the great line from Lloyd Christmas, uh, the, so you're telling me there's a chance, just doesn't exist in their minds. And when people get their minds set like that, the fallout of it not going their way, whichever way that is, is usually problematic. And both sides are behaving that way. Both sides. Those of you that are 
macro, Biden are absolutely convinced that because the polls show him up 10 percent, he's going to win. And those of you on the Trump side are absolutely convinced that the polls are wrong, just like they were in 2016, as if the poll people didn't learn nothing. I don't know. I do know that at least 45 percent of the people in this country are going to be absolutely apoplectic come Wednesday morning. I don't know which half it's going to be. I know which half I hope it is, but they're going to end up being wrong. And not just not just that their candidate lost, but they're going to be wrong about certain things. I know it's a, it's a dumb thing to draw sports analogies, but you remember back in 2014, I think it was, the Super Bowl, and the Broncos played the Seahawks. I was certain that the Broncos were going to win. I mean, we, <laughs> I had never been more certain of anything in my life. And they got killed. And not only did I have to put up with my wife for the next three or four days, who doesn't really like football, but she's from this area, Seattle area. So, you know, there was that. My daughter was a big Seahawk fan. It was embarrassing. And then a few years later, when we went back to the Super Bowl, I was really hoping. I had a lot of, a lot of, had a faith. But it was a much different approach. And when we won, I was much happier, I think. There's going to be people who are going to be upset about this, no matter what happens, because both sides convinced me that they are absolutely convinced that they cannot be wrong. And when, that's a recipe for disaster, and it concerns me greatly. So maybe if you're one of those people that's absolutely convinced that you know what's going to happen, um, maybe just tone it down a little bit. That's all I can say. I don't know. You know, it was weird because four years ago, going into that whole thing, I, I was not pro-Donald Trump. I'm still not pro-Donald Trump. I'm anti-Kamala Harris. So there it is. The, the idea of Kamala Harris being within a heartbeat of the presidency of the United States appalls me. And frankly, I think anybody who loves liberty should be appalled. But that's a story for another day because she's not technically running for president of the United States. Okay. Four years ago, I, I said then, Donald Trump will never be allowed to be a great president, but he will be an interesting president, and you got to admit he is. Whether you like him, whether you hate him, uh, is not really relevant to me. It really isn't. Um, there are some factors, I think, that come down in his favor that I appreciate. Number one, it's four years we haven't invaded anybody. <laughs> may seem like a small thing to you, but... In my ledger, that's a pretty big thing. It's a step in the right direction. Putting that aside, I think Joe Biden has some positives. Uh, not very many, but I think he has some. He also comes with concerns, much as Donald Trump does. I remember the morning after the election in 2016. I had pre-written my blog for that day. I didn't do a show that day for some reason, and I'm not really sure why. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I was still in my knee surgery recovery mode at that point, but I was writing every day, which is something I would really like to get back to is writing my blog every day. But um, I had pre-written it the night before on the assumption that Hillary Clinton was going to win. And everybody, it wasn't a dumb assumption. Everybody knew she was going to win, right? That whole campaign season, there was one guy who kept telling me that Donald Trump was going to win. Donald Trump's going to be the next president. I kept blowing him off. Psh, yeah, come on, right. Um, but he was right. Donald Trump didn't win. And I remember having to rewrite my blog that morning, which wasn't the chore that it could have been. I mean, it, I wasn't unhappy to have to rewrite it, but it was an interesting exercise in, okay, this is what I was thinking just a few hours ago. How am I thinking now? And I think in some ways the same thing's going to happen here. The, in some ways, what I'm saying to you now is the same thing I was saying then. You know, look, it doesn't matter who wins, the sun is still going to come up on Wednesday morning, and it's still going to come up on Thursday morning. Yes, it's going to be a shorter day because we're not in daylight savings time anymore, but the sun is still going to come up. Your life is still going to go on. My life is still going to go on. Yes, we give government far too much power over our lives. Yes, we don't pay attention to what we should be paying attention to, which isn't necessarily the presidency as much as it is our Congress people and our local councils our local city councils and mayors. But for the most part, your life is just going to go on the way it has been going. Now, of course, it's 2020, which means 
COVID. I don't know if it ends on Wednesday. I don't know if it goes on again. If I had to guess here in Washington, um, it's going to continue to go on until Jay Inslee decides that he's going to be uh, in the cabinet or or not in the cabinet. And I don't, I, who knows what's going to go on with that. What I do predict, though, is that Whoever wins, the other side will claim that there was collusion with somebody. And I think this, this is what I predict. If you think we're going to have four years of political peace, no matter who wins, you're insane. Everything, the groundwork has already been laid. It's already out there. I've already talked about it in the the, the Hunter Biden laptops. You know what the situation is with Trump. If you think we're going to have four years of peace... You're delusional. It's not going to happen. We're going to have four years of the same kind of political infighting, the same kind of arguments, the same kind of nonsense that we went through as a nation in the 1850s. Where that ends up, I don't know. Is there a compromise of 1850 on the horizon? Maybe. Maybe not. But not unless we find some statesmen to actually start putting things together and instead of just banning the flames of stuff. I don't know who's going to win. I know what the polls say. I know what the people who remember the polls of 2016 say. I know that if I'm a pollster and I got everything wrong in 2016, surely I learned something, right? Surely I redid. I was discussing with Bill the other day about Rasmussen. He's like, Rasmussen, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, well, back in 2012, Rasmussen tried to tell me that Meg Whitman was within the margin of error of, of Jerry Brown. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe polls. There's only one poll that matters. There's only one poll that counts. I don't even pay attention to him, to be honest with you. Don't care. But reality is, when that poll closes on Tuesday night, we'll probably have most of the answer, if not all of it, if what they're telling us is true, I think it's two-thirds of the entire number of people that voted in the entire election in 2016 have already voted, including myself. Um, we ought to be pretty close. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a stressful night. I don't think I'm going to do a Tuesday show. I just it's not that it's just going to be a cacophony of noise. You don't need my voice adding to that. If I do do a show, it will have absolutely nothing to do with the election. It'll have nothing to do with anything other than what interests me about something else. Maybe some science, maybe some sports. I don't know. Maybe I just won't even do it. History. But you certainly don't need any more politics for me on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we'll be here to talk about, you know, at least from a philosophical standpoint, where we go from there. What I do know is this, and I, I got this advice from a very good friend of mine, podcaster, who I really love his show. He's, he's one of the few people that I go out of my way to make sure I listen to every one of his shows, Chris Markowski. And Chris was saying the other day, never bet on the end of the world. Never bet on the end of the world. Now, Chris is a money guy. But what he had to say would made a lot of sense. If you bet on the end of the world, it's, it's a dumb thing to do because it's a losing bet. You can't win that bet, right? If you bet that the world's going to end, and it does, you're not going to be there to collect. So what did you win? <laughs> it doesn't do you any good to bet on the end of the world. In fact, what you should be doing is saying to yourself, okay, if this happens, what then? whether that's, you know, I'm going to make these changes in my life, I'm going to do this in my life, or whether we're going to continue on forward, or whether I'm going to become more active, or whether I'm not going to become more active. That's really what it should be divide, de deciding for us, is what we are going to do with our lives, not who are we going to put in charge to maybe do something for me, or maybe not do something for me, or maybe do something to the people that I don't like. It's not going to be the end of the world. So, never, ever bet on the end of the world. The losing bet. You're just throwing your money away. Okay? Don't bet on the end of the world. It's not coming. Not going to happen. Things might be the same. They might be different. You never know. But I can tell you this. 
no matter who wins, the sun is still going to come up on Wednesday. World is not coming to an end. <laughs>